Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our next session on Reinventing the Employee Experience. Joining us today is Caitlin Brown, Customer Success Lead, ANZ of Highball. And joining her will be Miss Jessie Ann Anderson, the VP of People and Culture of Haruka Edu. Should I say Pinta? Okay. Yeah, as mentioned during the first session, please make sure to input your questions on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen using the chat function, and we will be able to address them at the end of the session during our discussion period. Welcome to the screen, Caitlin and Jesse. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning and good afternoon to many of you, and thank you so much for having me here today. My name is Caitlin, and as mentioned, I'm the customer success lead for our Asia Pacific customers here at HiBob. What this means is that I get to work with people like you every day on how they adopt a system which prioritizes employee experience. Also joining me today is the lovely Jessie Ann, who is based in Singapore and is the VP of People and Culture at Pintaria. Since 2013, Pintaria has transformed tens of thousands of careers through pioneering experiential education for today's most in-demand skills throughout Indonesia, Singapore, and beyond. And together, we're here to talk to you about reinventing the employee experience. More specifically, we're going to talk to you about why employee experience is important, what factors contribute towards a positive employee experience that you should consider addressing, and how are other organizations like Pintaria addressing these in a really practical way? Now, before I get started, I will talk to you a little bit about um, Bob or Hi Bob and our platform Bob, as some of you here may not have heard about who we are. We were founded in 2015 and launched our headquarters in New York in 2018. Since that time, we've won many awards and accolades, including being a G2 crowd leader. In late 2021, we completed our Series C funding of $150 million and continue to grow by leaps and bounds. In addition to our headquarters in New York, we have offices in Tel Aviv, London, Amsterdam, Sydney, and many more on the horizon. We have close to 500 passionate people around the globe who are dedicated to making Bob the last HRIS system you'll ever need. As the modern world of work continues to evolve, so should the platforms that support you. HRIS systems began as a system of record, mostly for back office tracking. In the 2000s, they became systems of resources, which automated, at least at a minimal scale, payroll and time management. And then in the 2010s, evolving labor laws and requirements gave need to systems of compliance. But today, robust systems of engagement are at the center of successful people-centric organizations. And that's where Bob comes in. Bob is a modern multinational people management platform. We allow you to automate and scale your HR processes, develop your people and connect your teams connect your teams to help your organization and your employees grow faster and stronger, no matter where they're located in the world. Our global team serves close to 2000 customers across more than 100 countries and collectively over 350,000 employees around the world. We truly feel fortunate to help drive and support employee happiness by delivering exceptional employee experiences. Each quarter, more than 100 new companies join the HiBob community. And despite only arriving in the Asia Pacific region last year, we already have over 55 customers who are headquartered here and it's growing by the day. So that's a little bit about us before I get into the main topic. We did have a bit of a polling question that we wanted to ask before we kick off the presentation. So if you did want to make the time, I'll leave this poll up for 30 seconds to give you the opportunity to answer the question on your screen.
I'll give it five more seconds. Still a few results coming in, so I'll just leave it for one more moment. Amazing. Thank you. So empl improving employee experience is coming out first, which is definitely what today's session is about. So I'll jump into my next slide, which is why employee experience. So employee experience encompasses the entire employee life cycle from the hiring period to termination and everything in between. The employee experience is multidimensional, involving everyday interactions, duties, assignments, achievements, and setbacks of a job. We've all heard about the great resignation, but for companies who understand the impact and the importance of employee experience, they see this as the great realignment. Employees are no longer going to accept poor employee experience. And so if companies want to benefit and not suffer from the great resignation, they need to get on board. Good practices around employee experience can drive significant impact for businesses, people and innovation in your organisation. Research by Josh Burson suggests that in companies who leverage the right employee experience strategy are at least five times more likely to engage and retain their talent and are at least twice as likely to exceed financial targets. Similar research by Gallup found that increasing employee engagement resulted in reduced turnover, higher productivity, and increased profitability. So it's a bit of a no-brainer as to why it's important. Now, there are many facets to employee experience that need to be considered, but for today, I'm going to focus on the following. One, getting the onboarding right, which is far tougher now that not many people are going into the office and far much more of this is being done remotely. Two, creating a culture of belonging and inclusion, which when you're a hybrid company with employees spread across the globe can become is becoming increasingly difficult, but is certainly important. And three, understanding how modern tech and HR tech is going to enable a positive employee experience. Tech is no longer a nice to have, but is essential if you want to get the above done correctly. All right, so number one, getting the onboarding right. When an employee joins a new company, they are embarking upon a unique journey full of twists and turns that come to define their employee experience. Success and satisfaction along this journey are largely dependent upon how much organisational support they receive from the company. Information must be readily available and people must be efficiently guided towards the resources they need to do their job. Although companies recognise that first impressions and positive onboarding experiences are important to retaining employees, companies still aren't doing it well. According to Gallup research, only 12% of employees think their company did a great job with their onboarding in the real world. Now, let's throw in the need for remote and global onboarding and things get even tougher. Remote onboarding must go to even greater lengths to be creative, transparent and efficient to inspire new hires. It must connect them with the company culture and other employees. Without the benefit of real world company events, impromptu conversations by the water cooler and so on. Additionally, it tackles the unique needs of remote employees. Employees need equipment shipped to their homes and possibly even a guided setup session with someone from their team on their first day. So that brings me to a couple of my points. Number one, don't wait until day one to make your new team member feel welcome. Send them a welcome video explaining the company culture and vision. Let them build connections before day one. So encourage your team to reach out to them on LinkedIn and say hello before they even start. Keep in touch by creating a series of automated emails 
which can be sent in the lead up to an employee's first day. I know that personally that companies who have supported and adopted the above have very few new joiners resign or pull out between offer and actually joining the company. So if that's an issue for you, definitely look at the above and how you can adopt them in your organization. And of course, get the administrative basics right by requesting and collecting the right information from each employee without it being tedious or overtaxing. Please no printers or scanners anymore. Use provisioning and tools like single sign-on to automate access to your systems and tools. I know from firsthand experience that joining a company on the first day and not knowing how to get access to tools or who to ask to is quite a stressful experience. So make sure you have the systems and tools in place to support that. Number two, ensure the experience is consistent. This is especially critical when you're expanding into new regions. When a company does not have proper tools and processes in place to maintain a consistent experience, locations that are often further away from resources, further away from headquarters and so forth tend to suffer. Similarly though, even if two people start on the same day and are in the same office, but potentially are in different departments, it's not gonna be great if one person has a box of donuts swag and a three week onboarding plan on their desk while the person sitting next to them has nothing. So make sure you're not doing that and setting yourself up to, for failure. I know that it can be tough to maintain such a complex process, but there are systems and tools designed today to help you automate every task and process so that nobody is forgotten. Number three, set goals and expectations. Spend time to define what success looks like at 30, 60 and 90 days and make sure you celebrate the success when they achieve those goals. A key ingredient to a quick ramp up is setting achievable goals and then allowing that employee, new employee to achieve them and celebrating it loudly. So use Slack, use to, um, your other tools like Teams to ensure that you're celebrating your new team member's success. And lastly, make sure you seek feedback every step of the way. Make sure you're sending surveys to your um, team members and getting feedback on how the experience is going for them and adapt your processes accordingly. The world of work is changing quickly and we need to adapt our processes based on regular feedback. So it's very important that we get this right. Now, I do have a, another survey question to get your feedback. And the next one is, is your current onboarding program effective and engaging for new hires? I'll leave this one up for another 30 to 40 seconds just to allow you to respond. Amazing. And there, it looks like a significant portion of people have not got their onboarding processes set up. So um, definitely work that can be done there. All right. So the second point that I wanted to raise today is creating a culture of belonging in a hybrid work environment. So employees today, more than ever, are prioritizing meaning and purpose in their jobs. While at the same time, a recent Mercia research report found that almost 60% of organizations were reinventing flexibility as a core part of transforming their employee experience. With employees preferring hybrid work, companies must be mindful of how they will create a sense of belonging and inclusion and focus on building the culture. But how do you foster meaningful purpose-driven and productive workplaces while maintaining a hybrid 
the hybrid flexibility that many people have grown to love and expect. So the first point I have here is leverage your systems and tools. Leverage key engagement tools to build connections and communities between people. Find a way to touch the interests of many people by organizing varied events where people can connect based on their hobbies and interests. And ensure you have effective, an effective way of gathering and maintaining these interests by surveying your people or storing it in your HRIS system. Also organize social opportunities such as virtual cooking classes, or random coffee breaks, which stimulate the employee, the office kitchen environment. Yes, it's virtual, but it still allows people to maintain their connections and keep up with company news, updates and share stories. Number two, so celebrate loudly. So use tools again, such as Slack, Teams and Bob to celebrate the big and the small. Celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, new children and so forth. Kudos employees who achieve their goals and at the same with the same enthusiasm also kudos those employees who are um, embodying the culture of belonging that you are looking for. So if you see an employee help somebody else virtually using tools such as Slack or Teams, make sure you're celebrating that loudly as well. Number three always think inclusively if you are global make sure your systems are too a recent customer of ours highlighted that so often technology that comes out of the us or other countries are very us centric and as soon as you go to different time zones and currencies it gets quite hard you don't want to find yourself celebrating birthdays on the wrong day or getting notifications about anniversaries on the wrong day which is very frustrating for users, but also impacts negatively on the employee experience. So make sure the platforms you use are truly global and ensure that your systems and processes are built to support both remote, local and overseas employees alike. Finally, the last point I do have here is embrace the flexibility on all fronts. While it may be tougher to create a culture of belonging with added flexibility, the data very clearly shows that companies who aren't embracing flexibility are suffering to hire, attract and retain talent. Similarly, companies who are perceived not to trust their employees to work flexibly are more often fostering cultures of mistrust instead of the more favorable cultures of transparency, honesty and trust. And don't be scared to take it a step further and also focus on well-being as part of that. Soon you'll hear from Jesse and how they're embracing flexibility to attract and retain talent in such a competitive landscape. Even here at HiBob, we've recently introduced quarterly balance days where after the close of each quarter, all Bobbers globally will be shutting down for a long weekend on HiBob. That means no emails, no messages and so forth. Just time to switch off, refresh, relax and rejuvenate knowing that all the teammates around us are doing the same thing. Now, I think based on the, the previous slides that I've just shown, the power of technology in supporting this is pretty clear. The best HR tech tools drive the most change while requiring the least investment of time and energy by employees and the HR team. In the past five years, Google searches for the term employee experience have increased by 130%. Employees and companies alike are focusing on the benefits of a positive Workplace, workplace experience and employees are seeking, seeking companies that place a premium on this. It makes sense that organizations that implement employee experience platforms attract and retain top performers while driving strong business results. We're moving towards a more human way of working, prioritizing employees while driving productivity and efficiency. So it only makes sense to invest time in the tools that will help you achieve that goal. So now that you've heard a little bit from me, I would also like to invest, invite Jesse to the conversation. 
Jesse, I'd love to know a bit more about how Pentari Pentari is addressing this, and more specifically, the what the office plan where employees collaborate and connect. Can you share with us how Pintari approach, what Pintari's approach to hybrid work is in relation to this? Yeah, definitely. And thank you for also having me here today. Um, so actually with the whole COVID situation that's happening, we've actually taken a step back at Pintaria and we've kind of rethought the whole idea of what an office space is. So we're actually moving away from even calling it an office space and we're gonna call it a Pintaria campus instead. So what we have done is we've actually been redesigning the, the space so that instead of it being an office where you go to the physical office, you sit down, you have a cubicle and you work, what we're doing is we're actually having spaces. So spaces to ideate, spaces to collaborate, spaces to also relax. And I think that's the way forward that we are moving into. We want to have a place where we can come together, not to do our work, but more about how do we ideate, how do we create ideas together, and how do we also work as a team together. So, so that's what we're moving towards. And I think that's the way forward as well, because if you think about it, a lot of articles that have been going out recently, and if you also, you know, are part of the recruitment process, everyone is asking, can I work remotely? Can I work from home? Can I also have a hybrid system? And that's just a huge sign for us to also think a bit more about what really is office space now for. And that's why we've also concluded that, you know, office space is no longer an office space. It's a place for collaboration. It's a space where you get ideas. It's a space where you brainstorm. And we're providing the, the amenities for that as well at Pintaria. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jesse. I think the piece there that really sort of resonates with me all that I love is the idea of a workplace being a campus. Um, so the next question I have here is the economy is bouncing back across the region and along with this the competition for talent is becoming more challenging. How is Pintaria, Pintaria um, investing in culture to attract and retain talent? So that's a really good question. Um, so a bit of a backstory is I joined about a month ago and we actually have been also talking. So I talk quite uh, frequently with the CEO on how do we do this? And one of the inspirations that came out a couple of months ago when I was reading a book by David Spinks on the business of belonging is how do we also move our, you know, um, colleagues to become more of a community. So what I mean is how can we actually have an internal community like a Wikipedia example so that we can leverage on each other, we can support each other, we can grow together. And that's also how we become, you know, a culture where we're supporting innovation, we're supporting feedback, and we're also very supportive of each other growing together as a, a company as well. So one of the things we're doing is actually to create this and we have five pillars that's going to support it. Um, very briefly, the five pillars for, you know, supporting the community internally is to support. So how do we empower our people um, to focus on what they like doing? So, for example, what you said was, how can we um, leverage on people's hobbies? Uh, how can we leverage on people, for example, who are very um, excited about Agile? How can we empower them to have their own little group? And how can they also just take it forward rather than having the people and culture team organizing events. So we want to empower our team to be able to have their groups of interest, have their groups of, uh, you know, knowledge sharing. And I think that's the kind of culture we are also building. And that's something that we're very excited about. So besides support, we want to create processes that will also um, facilitate this uh, so that people will contribute, which is another pillar of community, um, and also have them engage throughout the entire um, time they are part of Pintaria and also how can we also make sure that people are successful so it's very exciting to be able to move away from just having activities for the sake of having it so that we call it employee engagement and moving more towards a community where it's part of the culture to support growth to support development and also to support each other in what we really enjoy doing so that people are empowered to be the ambassador that they want to be and have groups of interest that can facilitate this knowledge transfer as well. Amazing. Thanks, Jesse. I love the business of belonging and also the fact that you're focusing on the trust and some of those things, which I know is something I haven't spoken about today, but is definitely a key part of the employee experience. So it's very important to foster that as well. 
So the next question I have here is, what are some creative ways that you can replicate company culture when working from home? So I think uh, working from home has been a bit of a challenge, especially in the first uh, few months from 2020. But I think if you just think about how you can leverage technology to replicate culture, for example, in our own people and culture team, uh, because we're a tech startup, we've embraced the whole idea of being part of you know technology and we have our own scrum meetings on Monday. So we have like a little virtual stand up. And then every other Friday, we have like a retro uh, event. So we use different platforms like Miro, for example, to you know put memes, share the thoughts in the last two weeks, or we even use Trello, for example, for planning. So we use uh, all these technology to move beyond the idea of you know micromanaging, because that's not what it is. It's more about how can we collaborate? How can we also share ideas within our own uh, scrum meetings on Monday? how do we help each other and facilitate that as well? So I think the way we use technology to ensure that we are replicating the experience of working from home or working from wherever you're most productive, I think that's what we've done. Um, and I think not to also forget the element of, we need to have um, you know, meetings which are not just about work. So for example, in our own team, we had like a little retreat one or two weeks ago so we had virtual lunch together and we talked about everything but work. Um, and I think that's what we need to remember with everything do, that we do create to elevate employee experience. We need to also remember that we have to ensure that people also do have the connections with each other um, and technology like Slack enables us to have very different channels for example, kudos or even celebrating birthdays, celebrating work anniversaries. So I think that's one of the ways that technology has really helped us and shifted our mindset in terms of how we can actually um, really engage people and, and elevate the employee experience. Yeah, definitely. I love that. We do that at Bob as well with regards to retros and having dedicated time where we're still connecting, but we're not necessarily talking about work um, and leveraging tools like as Trello and Miro and so forth to facilitate that. Definitely critical piece. Um, the last question I have here is listening to employee fat feedback is valuable for people leaders to make well-informed decisions. In this instance, how has feedback to help shape Pinteria's employee experience strategy? So that's a good question. And I think uh, feedback is very important. So what we have done first is, of course, we have the formal avenues where you have your biannual surveys. But to also get feedback uh, that is unsolicited, we have an anonymous post box. So anyone can go and leave you know, recommendations, suggestions, feedback, or even just share how are they feeling today. Um, and that kind of feedback is very important for us because I believe that as a people and culture team, we should never work in silo and just implement policies or initiatives that we think are good. But once we actually know how people are feeling, what their thoughts are, what their suggestions are, we're able to incorporate whatever feedback they have given us into our HR roadmap. So how we also do that at Pindaria is if someone shares something with us, we will, of course, look at the roadmap and then we can also share that with them that, you know, this is when we can look to implement something or if it's something that is very immediate that we see that it's a high priority. And if we make a, a change right now, it's going to be a huge win for us then we will also do it. So I think it's also about being a bit flexible. Sometimes, of course, we have to um, plan it out well. But if there's some things where it's an immediate win and we can really just solve something for our colleague to remove their bottleneck, um, we also do that. So I think having the different avenues of just getting feedback, um, both solicited and non-solicited, is a great way to also ensure that whatever we're doing is very relevant and give the colleagues the opportunity to also shape the employee uh, engagement that we have, uh, the strategy that we have. And, and I think that's a, a really important piece. There's, you can always collect feedback, but unless you actually action it or show, present that information back to the team and show how you're going to actually apply it in a meaningful way, it can negatively, in fact, actually impact the employee experience if you don't do anything with that information. I'd love to know, is there any yeah. sort of examples of, of su a survey piece of feedback that you've received that you adopted in your organization? 
Yeah, so that actually, really well? the feedbacks, yeah. Uh, yeah, so one of the feedbacks we've received just very, very recently, I would say over the last couple of days is, uh, so some of our colleagues are not very proficient in the English language. And what we've done is we've got the feedback and we've also got a community of lecturers that we can tap on. So, you know, our CEO is also working to get someone to come on board to also help teach our colleagues English so that they feel that they have a safe space to try it out and also be able to communicate with other colleagues who are outside and working in different countries. So I think that's some of the immediate things that we have received uh, very, very recently. And that's how we're also working on it. And we're going to share it in the next All Hands, which is next week. So I think just being able to get the feedback, uh, work on it, and also share it in a very public forum like All Hands or just sharing it on Slack channel. I think that's how you also gain trust. So it doesn't feel like it's going into a black hole and no one hears anything about the feedback that they have given to us. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's great. And something we haven't really touched on, but I know we've spoken about together is, is sort of the, the flat culture or the, the, cult, the type of sort of structure you're building to facilitate employee engagement. I'd love to hear, I'm sure everybody here would love to hear a little bit more about that if you're comfortable sharing. Yeah, so um, I think at Pintaria we've also been moving away because when the new management took over last year, uh, you know, the culture has also been changing. So what we are trying to do is just to create a very transparent culture. And I think it starts with very small things because if we're able to show how transparent we are in even what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, like, you know, through scrums or getting suggestions from our colleagues and working on it and sharing it, I think, first of all, that kind of transparency is very important for people to also trust that we are really staying and walking the talk. Um, some of the other ways we've also made it quite flat is to ensure that, you know, in our kudos channel, for example, we want everyone to be involved in it. Um, instead of just always having the, the management, the senior management or the managers to give kudos, every time is we are trying to encourage our managers to ensure that everyone else is giving um, kudos, giving feedback uh, and just involving everyone in the process. So I think we're starting small first. We're starting by using technology um, to help us and then we're going to move forward and really bring it forward with the community idea that we have. So everyone's going to partake in the different kinds of you know, interest groups that we have. And I am very excited about doing that this year. Yeah, definitely. And I promise uh, the last question for me, I would also love to know um, with regards to onboarding, it is, it's really difficult to do it consistently when you are global. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some ways that, um, what are some things that you're using to help support make that experience consistent? So it's very, very uh, timely because yesterday I was talking with one of my team members and we are redesigning the entire process of onboarding. And I think a few of the things that we are trying to do is to use different um, hats on. So what I mean is like, how do we also use, for example, design thinking and uh, customer success in how we design onboarding, which is what we've done. We've actually done um, a customer journey mapping. So we're able to see, for example, what are the touch points from the moment someone signs a contract to their first day and then their first day for the until day 90. So we're trying to map that out and see what are the touch points we have? How can we also ensure that people get the opportunity not just to interact with their own teams, uh, but with also someone outside through buddy programs, for example. So doing the mapping, using also our HR system, Bob, uh, to help us automate that process so that we are able to engage them and ensure that, you know, they feel excited about joining, they feel excited and they feel that, you know, when they have their first week milestone, we are reaching out to them and congratulating them. So it's similar to what you say, celebrate the milestones and also make sure that um, we use technology to help us automate a lot of things so that we can still maintain the experience and people still feel that we are reaching out to them and also finding out how they are through surveys, through one-on-ones with the people and culture team. So we can also get on the ground feedback and continually reiterate whatever we're doing to make sure that every single gap that we have is filled and we have a fantastic onboarding experience. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jesse. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining. What we might do now is also open it up to, to the group to see if there's any questions from the audience they would like to ask us. 
Thank you so much, Caitlin and Jesse, for discussing the common challenges that companies are facing in today's talent market and essential tips for creating a positive employee experience. We do have some questions from the audience. Let me just uh, have a look. For leaders who are resistant to a hybrid work model, how do you influence them to take a more open approach? Jesse, did you want to start with this one or I'm happy to take it and then pass to you? Uh, yeah, sure, I can do that. Um, I've actually had a couple of cases where I've had managers who were resistant to the hybrid work model. Um, and I found out the best way was not to just, you know, shove down a program and tell them this is what you have to do. But I think you have to take a couple of steps back and also understand what's their fear, where are they coming from? So that when you do try to um, enlighten them on hybrid working and how it also benefits them, they understand. So I think addressing the fear and addressing how it helps them, how it helps their team and how at the end of the day, it also helps their team to hit the OKRs. I think that is one way I have done to remove the fear and also convert them into a hybrid working model. Yeah, definitely. I would definitely echo that and saying there is, you do need to understand what makes that particular exec or leader um, excited to go to work or what motivates them, what are their KPIs and use those things that they're striving to achieve and what they're getting measured on to help them understand how employee experience or hybrid work is going to help them achieve those goals. So definitely would say the same as you there. Thank you so much, Caitlin and Jesse. We do have one more question. How do you encourage your organization to embrace HR tech? Um, I, I guess I can like start. Start. Yeah, sure. Um, I think HR technology um, is something that's very beneficial. I'm a huge believer in that. Um, but I think it's also about, you know, tailoring the HR tech to who you're talking to. So if it's someone from the C-suite, you have to also, you know, um, give them the right reasons. What's the returns on having the platform? Because it does cost money. But at the end of the day, the money is going to be used to um, retain, to develop, and also to attract people into our organization. And that you can't really put a cost on it. For the rest of the organization, I think getting them on board is to make it fun, make it, you know, um, uh, have competitions, like what we're going to be doing for our rollout on the Hive Up, and also just make it fun so that people understand what is in it for them. And once they also understand that, they are able to see how fun it is and how collaborative it is for them and their teams and how they also get to know people who are working in another country and learn about their culture. So I think, yeah, different ways to also deal with different groups of people, but just make it fun and also uh, tailor it to the right audience that you're talking to. Yeah, definitely. Some other things that I would add there is find your champions in an organization. I always recommend this to people who are implementing a HR solution to say, who are those people in your organization that everyone looks to and embodies their and what they do and, and get them on board, get them really excited, ask them to post shout outs or interact or use or talk about how they're using the system so that it's not just coming from HR, it's actually coming from the people in the business as well. Um, and sometimes also into like the way your HR system integrates with other systems can help them embrace it. So if somebody loves using Slack or Teams, allow them to do interact with the HR system where they are and where they're working so that it's it's in the flow of work, which also really resonates with some people. So much, uh, Caitlin. We do have another question. Uh, is it good to brag or share the day-to-day -to, -day to public through social media? As I think celebrations. Uh, I, yeah, I, I assume that it, it's in regards to celebrations. And so I think it does depend on the size of the company. When you're small, definitely it's worthwhile talking broadly and getting everybody involved. But even as we've started to be more thoughtful about the types of um, shout outs and announcements and ways that we share celebrations, in the organization to make sure that it is the relevant audience or we're including the right people in those posts. 
But if you aren't in an office with these people, which is where you would be sharing this information, it's definitely, definitely um, important to think about how you can use technology to replicate that sort of office environment or involve everybody, even if they're remote or even if they're overseas. So yeah, that would be my response there. Jesse, did you want to add anything? No, I completely agree on that. Um, yeah, I have nothing else to add. I think you, you definitely summed it up quite well. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. We do have a, a couple of other questions, but we will get these questions addressed offline. For those in the audience who have questions for Caitlin and Jesse, please do send them across our way and we'll get them answered offline as well. Again, you'll be able to access this presentation on our on demand once the event has concluded. Thank you so much, Caitlin and Jesse, for your time. We really appreciate your insights on reinventing the employee experience. Thank you Thank so you. much for having us. All right, we are now moving on to our next session on transformative skill development, building the workforce of the future at 11 a.m. Singapore time. So please make your way to the other room and I'll see you there shortly.